Hello everybody, Foxy Games here and welcome back to Hard Space Shipbreaker. When we last left off, we finished up our training and we were put out into the bay on our own. So, we're going to do our first completely unsupervised shift. Uh, we don't need to continue salvage anymore because we salvaged the entire ship. So, let's check the ship catalog. We have a few that we can take. Uh, these are all considered easy and they are ship rank 2. We could also go back to the training one if we want to. We don't, so we're going to go ahead and check one of these. Let's see, these are all mackerels, which are small ships. Uh, that This one is a light cargo ship known as the Queen of Tatiana Exp Titania Express. The Luminous Conway 13, which is a station hopper. The Longieri, Longieru, uh, which is a light cargo. And the Swift Allen, also a light cargo. Now, most of these have a high hazard rating, which doesn't particularly bother me. Um, let's see, total value. Looks like the Luminous Conway, the 13th, has a particularly higher value. So we're going to go with that. It is a station hopper. Let's do it. <clears throat> All right, Gutter. Now that you've completed your training, you're only about a billion credits away from paying off your debts and length. I know the thought of making 10,000 credits, let alone a billion, sounds impossible right now. But I can assure you it is within your reach, if you put in the work. You've got the DNA to be a great salvager one day. Literally. Your report here says your blood work confirmed ideal genetic makeup, physique, intelligence, and psychological profile for the position of shipbreaker. I'm guessing that means Lynx thinks you're less likely to blow yourself up. Let's see if they're on to something. Complete your work order and return here to your hab when you're ready for another ship. And careful with that reactor. One false move and you're a goner. And a whole lot of credits poorer. Good luck, Cutter. We were out. He's not wrong. Alright, now as you can see in the top left, we have significantly fewer tethers available to us than we did in the last mission. And that's because we are back at a lower Salvage rank. Secure. We're no longer Salvage training. Lynx no longer sees the need to give us infinite versions of the tethers, so... Um, we are now at the mercy of a limit. Salvage deposit accepted. Credits transferred. So first things first, we're going to free these engine nacelles. Very good. These are quick and easy credits. And if you'll notice, in the top right, we also now have a time limit. Each mission will have a time limit. You can only stay out for so long, per regulations, I'm sure. So let's get inside and see what we have to work with. Also, see in the middle, toward the bottom, near my health and fuel, just above that, is my O2 meter. Airlock pressure levels increasing. Of course, coming inside will keep your O2 at a steady level. Let's see, is there anything cool in here? That's a door. Right, where's the door panel? There doesn't seem to be a door panel for some reason. But the engine room is behind there. So I'm going to do an epic gamer move, and I'm just going to destroy this door, or pull it off its hinge. Yeah, we'll do that. Let's not destroy it. Well, we can sell it. Not sell, but you know what I mean. 
Anyway, we're going to go ahead and open up these interior doors leading to the maintenance section of the ship. We're also going to turn on our light. Up there is our meal ticket, which we will be taking advantage of in short order. And we're also going to make our way to the cockpit. Um, first, we're going to yank these doors off the hinge, if we can. I don't think we can. No. That would be too easy. Ooh, what do we have here? A data drive. We'll take that. Oh, hey, 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 hey. I know it was you. I know it was. You think you can just underbid us like that? Oh, don't give me fair. That wasn't fair and you know it. We make all the platinum runs for links. No, no, no. What? Faster. Oh, you wish. They're flying what? Uh, Crayon's extra C8 under the hood? This here's the Susomo 920. Oh, buddy, no. Just look, the captain has a deal for you. It's simple, really. A race. Half the cargo each. Full burn. We'll see who can reach Mars Village first. You in? Oh, come on. You're a coward. I'll like, yeah, no, that's right, coward. So we had a little business dispute in that recording. Uh, not uncommon. Also, look at that, it's a power cell. We we're gonna be careful with that because it's very close to these coolant tanks. Power cells, arc electricity, and coolant tanks, well, as you may have guessed, leak coolant. Uh, this is also a fuel tank over here, and well, I'll give you three guesses what those contain. Um, every single one of those are completely hazardous to our health, but also very profitable. So, let's start drilling a way out for our friend the reactor, but we're not going to do that first, because we are not stupid here. Uh, remember all those arcs of electricity? Yeah, they can arc straight to that fuel tank and blow a massive hole in the hull. And while holes in the hull are something that we can obviously take advantage of here in Hard Space Shipbreaker, we want it to be on our terms. So we're not going to do that just yet. We're going to be careful and strategic about this. So we'll send this panel. Bye-bye. And we will jump up in here. Valuable object process. And we'll see... If we can't, hmm, that's a pipe leading to the engine. Um, I can't see the systems through here, so. Hmm, I sure hope that's not gonna blow anything up. Seems to be okay. We're not leaking fuel. Get in there, get in there. Very good. So let's get these fuel canisters down onto the barge, because they are worth a good amount of money. Salvage deposit accepted. Credit transferred. There we go. Come here, you. Now, you can be a little bit rough with these things. They're meant to be jostled around a little. They're not going to explode if you sneeze on them, but you still got to be careful. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. There's the uh, airlock. And we're going to do a little bit of surgery over here. Now we do only have roughly seven and a half minutes left on this shift. So, that means we're going to have to be a little bit quick about removing what we want to remove first and foremost, because the costs do begin to add up if you come back to uh, ships that you've already started, because of your rentals, because of your fees, and your, um, and your interest and everything. So, we want to be quick about it. We want to get as much valuable stuff as we can until we're at a point where we can purchase our own equipment. So, let's give this a push. I 
and start completing our work orders, which is going to be the second most valuable thing that we get, aside from cold hard cash. Peel the orange. Right, it's a good thing he reminded me because I have about a minute left of oxygen. This would have come way quicker had I not purchased that upgrade. So, to buy oxygen, you just come here, and you don't think they just give you oxygen. No, no. You have to buy it. Now you can also find oxygen inside the ships that you're salvaging. Um, there'll be oxygen tanks and stuff like that. You can be strategic about when you choose to use them or whatever. This time around I'm not going to mess with it, but you know, I just figured it'd be easier to run out and find one and not find one, um, run out and buy some. So anyway, let's take this coolant tank and shove it down to the barge. We'll take this power cell, and as you can see, it's arcing electricity. If we had done that... Thank you, Weaver. Um, if we had done that near that coolant tank, we would have run the risk of bursting said coolant tank. Um, you know what? Now's a good time to pull the reactor, I think. Let's get it down quick this time. Away from us, preferably, so it doesn't arc on us. There we go. Alright. Now that the most dangerous parts of this ship have been harvested, we can just kind of casually work on the nanocarbons and the metals. Also, we want to cut the, uh, what's it called? The airlock free. Uh, let's see, not there, but down here. We'll cut the airlock free so it depressurizes, but doesn't fling itself all over the place. Um, maybe? Oh, maybe it's already depressurized. In fact, I might have taken care of that by ripping a door or something. I don't know. I can't remember. My memory is goldfish tier. Either way, we seem to have gotten all of the cut points out here. So... We can start shoving these panels out. Or maybe not. Hmm. There's still something that way. Oh, was I pushing the wrong way? I sure was. Silly me. <clears throat> also, I have noticed, and maybe other players will, uh, say otherwise, but I've noticed I never run out of fuel. It's just not something I ever run out of. Right. I forgot to buy tethers while I was over there. Yeah. Lynx doesn't give you anything. It's either rented or purchased. Processing valuable object. Awarded. It's like, if corporate America was a nation... It'd be Lynx. Welcome to Vendatron 9000. Oops. Have a nice day. Uh, corporate anything, I imagine. This is definitely not limited to America. Anybody who thinks that rampant capitalism is a purely American thing clearly has not been anywhere else in the world.
Anyway, let's uh, level ourselves off with this thing and give it a cut. Nice. Clean slice. It's tiny, but they'll bitch at us if we don't do it. Material deposited. Now we can't yank this door off. We can yank that off. So we'll just instead give it a cut. And at the very least, we can throw it into the furnace as metal salvage. All right, Cutter. Wrap it up. You got about a minute left. One more minute. Also, the exterior panel is coming off, which is always good. That can go straight into the processor. And this thing can go straight into the barge. Did we take the door mechanism out? We did not yet. But you know what? That's going to go to the barge anyway, so... Valuable object process. Credit deposited. <laughs> Take this. Ooh, bonk. Bonk. It's fine, though. Salvage deposit accepted. Credit trained. How much time do we have? 15 seconds? Let's just use our remaining tethers to really pull that in there. Just as quickly as possible. And that's the end of a shift. Somehow it says that an antenna was destroyed. I'm not sure how, but whatever. We didn't salvage any of the lights or anything like that. We did destroy a door. We don't care. We earned 1.6 million credits. Also, um, you can do a radial menu kind of thing. I don't. And about 500 thousand credits were taken as part of our fees and shit. So anyway, data recovery. Let's recover that. This is probably just that audio log that we got. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's that. Okay. Certifications. Furniture, work order objectives, these are all things that we need to get. How about our equipment? We have some Lynx tokens. We would like more tethers, so let's get that. Oh yes, and your equipment, it wears out. It doesn't wear out nearly as quickly as it used to. It used to be every couple of missions you'd have to fix it. But we're going to continue with that ship. You will eventually have to repair. Oh wow, it doesn't top off your fuel between runs. It, it used to, I think. So yeah, I guess I will have to be buying fuel. Anyway, that's no problem. Everything on here can just go to the processor, right? Looks like it. Except, there are a few things, like these lights. I don't know if they're considered furniture or what, but they can go down there because we need to do that. Salvage secured. And we need this door console here. That can go to the barge. The whole rest of it can go over there. Oh yeah, don't get hit by these things while they're flying around. It will hurt, if not kill. Still a couple of anchor points in here that we seem to have missed. That's okay. Uh, we don't need that door panel anymore since there's no more door. Processing valuable object. Credits awarded. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Chirp, chirp, chirp. Come here. Alright, now the whole rest of this shit, except for this light here, can go into the processor. This can go into the furnace, apparently. So we can really just cut off this whole damn panel.
Matter of fact, let's do that. We need to salvage some metal anyway. Um, why is it separate like that? Huh. Oh, whatever. Turn it around and yeet it over there. I'm surprised this is the first time I've used the word yeet this whole playthrough. Well, it did only take me one ep oh, two episodes. This is the second episode, that's right. What what fucking sense does this make? Oh, it's held on from back there. Oh well. Cut that too. And this is where the limitations of this game start to show through a little bit. Um, the cutting isn't always sensible. And sometimes that happens. Come here. Just go. Oh, that was all the metal we needed. There, it came off in two pieces, but it's fine. It's okay. Then you can start going that away. Look at that. 360. No. Oh, shit, no. No, wait, I forgot something. One of the most important parts. The thruster. That needs to come out. <laughs> oh, that would have been bad. So we have to remove the thruster cap. Which does not seem to be bolted down, which is great. Thruster comes out. the big metal dildo that it is. That goes down to the barge. And now, this is actually in a better position to go there. Hey, all of our work orders are done. Isn't that lovely? So now, we have an additional 10 minutes, ish, 9 minutes, to finish up with this ship. Valuable object process. Credits awarded. And in that time, we want to get in here, remove these panels very quickly, so we can start recycling some of this furniture, which I will need to rank up. So really, I want to make some holes so we can get these chairs the door, which is shoved into that doorway there, and whatever electronics are in the cockpit. Object accepted for processing. Credits deposited. Very good. So let's get all this paneling sorted. The ship is now kind of on its side, which actually may work to our benefit here. Uh, that panel's gonna pull that panel in, which is... yeah, that's fine. Hey, Coder. I need you to head back to the kiosk on the starting platform to fill up your O2. That. Let's see if we have any O2 in here. Salvage deposit accepted. Pretty sure that's O2. Oh, yeah. Oxygen level stabilized. And this is fuel. We'll take that, so we don't have to spend money on it. That's good. Oh shit, we put this whole thing into a spin, haven't we? No? Good. Let's take some of this garbage out of the way. Salvage secured. Credits deposited. These crates. Door panel. Getting a bit disoriented because I'm forgetting that this is actually the bottom of the ship that I'm looking at. But because the whole thing turned. Which, again, is going to work to our advantage because the remaining panels are on the top of the ship. But it's still a bit disorienting. All these things are quick and easy to salvage and... Therefore, they add up very quickly. Uh, that's a repair kit, which are expensive, so I'm just gonna take that. 
I'm pretty sure those still just save until your next mission. You know, when you need them, rather. They save between missions is what I'm trying to say, but I'm dumb. Let's take this atmosphere controls. Did something just blow up? I swear I heard a pop. Deposit accepted. Credits transferred. Take this door and shove it into the processor. No anchor points in here, so we're going to have to pull everything through this doorway. There's a key in there, which we don't need, actually. Usually that would be to... Oh, that would be for the fuel. No, we'll take it anyway, a utility key. That would be to um, vent any fuel that's still in the pipes to the fuel canisters, so cutting the fuel lines doesn't cause an explosion. But this ship doesn't have such a feature. Usually a feature of larger ships. Alright, we got a good five and a half minutes left. These panels are really starting to piss me off. I think I might just cut myself a hole. No, maybe not. It's gonna be a pain in the ass, isn't it? What the fuck was that? Well, it's already knocked out, so we don't have anything to worry about. I'm just gonna try and cut this thing apart as best I can. So I have some room to throw these things out the bottom. Well, the new bottom, anyway. And we'll take this salvage for metal. Let's go ahead and take this computer and hope it does not electrocute us. Take this one. Yeah, see, it was arcing. It wanted to. It really Salvage wanted to. Come here, you. See, that one was arcing too. It looks like we won't need to buy oxygen for the rest of the shift, which is nice. And since we've got a little bit more time, let's cut off the re remaining cut points here. Let's see what we can salvage in the remaining three and a half minutes or so. Looks like somebody left their beepus in here. Let's see, this whole thing is for the furnace. Except for that, that goes to the processor, but you know, I don't particularly care, so we're just gonna throw it in the furnace. This panel can then go in the processor. Is it not? It's not freed yet. Oh god, that's gonna pull a whole ship over there. Which might not be a bad thing, to be honest. There, now you can go there. Let me take this light, shove that aside, and say goodbye to that thing. Oof, disoriented. Come here, light. And this door is somehow in one piece. Not sure how that works. Anyway, the rest of this is mostly good for the furnace. Your so, oxygen reserves are low. Note that excess carbon dioxide can cause damage to Link's equipment. Caution, tether supplies are low. Oh, well, I guess I do have to get oxygen. I miscalculated. Looks like the big part of the ship is recycled. Good. Let's see what else we can do in here in the remaining minute and a half. Well, we've recycled nearly everything here, so... Matter of fact, aside from this door control... We can just shove the whole rest of this ship in there. Carter, we're 
getting down to the wire. Let's put a bow on this shift. I could hardly think of a more fitting end. Just watching the rest of this, our first fully harvested mackerel float into the uh, float into the furnace, and look at all this beepus that we can't drink. Material deposited. All this stuff just goes into the furnace anyway. It'll just be destroyed as impurities, sure, but we lost a little bit of nanocarbon in there, but that's fine. There it goes. Oh yes, and we're done. This this shift is over. Now we just head back to the jack and say goodbye to our first unsupervised ship. And we made a cool 1.2 million credits with uh, the majority of our profit coming from these nanocarbon panels and the thruster. Yeah, the seats actually a hundred, cool 120,000 credits just from the seats alone and there were only eight of them. The computer terminals were only slightly more expensive. What the hell are these seats made out of? Gold? And the glass gave us a good 66,000 credits, and it's gonna tell us that a whole bunch of other shit was destroyed, but we don't give a flying fuck. And so in this case, we only, uh, well, we made less than a million because of our fees. Alright, so we only have to get one more work order objective to rank up and only seven more furniture objects and get up to five million credits. If we take a look at our equipment, it doesn't look like there's anything that we can upgrade because we don't have enough points. Let's go ahead and start a new ship. So, we did a station hopper before. I kind of want to try out a light cargo mackerel that seems like it's going to have more... Well, no, you'd think a station hopper would probably have more, uh... More seating and furniture and shit, so we're gonna we're just gonna go with the, once again, the most expensive ship here. So that we can increase our level. Alright, Cutter. This here's another macro. Just a little history lesson for you. The entire macro class was decommissioned once they juiced the force of the rail gates. Link scooped up thousands of them on the cheek. Now finish up your work order and salvage as much as you can of each ship before moving on to the next. We call it using the whole buffalo. You want to pay off that mountain of debt you're carrying on your back? That's how it's done. We were out. Yeah, you already told us that, Weaver, but thanks. So, let's get in there. Start freeing up these nacelles. Yes, I know Weaver called them nacelles, but I don't think that's right. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but it doesn't sound right to me, so I'm not going to say it that way. Hey, Cutter. You want to see something special? Oh, this is cool. Take a look at that rail gate. Salvage deposit accepted. The rail gate is how they launch ships into deep space. Which they just did. Wow. What a beauty. <laughs> you know, no matter how many times I see that rail gate fire, it never ceases to amaze me. Could be you one day. Could be us one day. Ah, that was beautiful. The rail gate is basically humanity's, uh, humanity's means of launching ships into deep space. And it is exactly what it sounds like. You just picture a rail gun that fires ships instead of, uh, instead of bullets. And I'm sure all of that electromagnetic radiation I was just bombarded with is completely safe and, you know, totally not detrimental to my health, but hey. I'm sure, I'm sure Link's company doesn't, w or corporation rather, does not want us speaking of this. 
What's this? Data drive. Corrupted data device transmitted to the hab. So it's not audio. All right, one of the big things that we are going to want from this is the power cell, which is over there. We're going to want sufficient space to get to this power cell. So we're going to take off these panels first. It also seems like the coolant tank is not on this side of the ship. Um, it, there is a certain random element to the generation of ships, which is cool. It's nice not having carbon copies of each vessel that you <clears throat> that you take apart. Let's see what they gifted us in the ship's hold, in terms of oxygen. Looks like not much. That looks like fuel. Mm, no? Oh, there's some air. Very good. Thank you. Oxygen level stabilizing. Alright, so it looks like we got all these panels. Maybe. Maybe. Oh yeah, it's just taking its time. And we can start moving them into the processor. As I like to say, peel the orange. And take that light. I like how those red lights turn on, too. It's like, hey, you're now running on emergency power. I don't even know if these lights register, to be honest. Whatever. We don't need to worry about tiny things like that. We're a ship breaker, not a light collector. Oh, and now that we're over here, let's go ahead and cut this big-ass panel open. Maybe it'll help us down the line. Hopefully it doesn't cut through and break anything. I got about five minutes left in this shift, Cutter. Don't bite off more than you can chew. We wrap. Whoa, okay. Holy shit. Come here. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Ah, no. Um, give me that fuel. Give me these chairs. That was interesting. Again, the entire ship seems to have been turned on its side somehow. I actually don't know how that happened this time. Just make sure to shove it that way. And in our remaining five minutes, we will, of course, throw as much in there as possible, including the reactor. If we can get in there in time, which we should. Now that we don't have anything in our way or potentially uh, hazardous if the electricity arcs to it. So let's pull that big mama and yeet it down there. All right. Now we can pull the rest of this. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and pull the thruster as well. So you can go that way. Remove that from its housing. Let it slide out like the biggest dump this ship has ever taken. last shit it'll ever take. And how fitting, because this ship is dead. Oh, fuck me. 
Oh, that's bad. It still had fuel in it. Go, go, go. Join your friends. Whew. That was scary. <laughs> Have I mentioned the music in this game is great? Because it is. So I suppose while I'm working on this, in the last minute and a half that I have on this mission, I could start talking about, um, things with the channel. Uh, as you could tell, my upload schedule is sparse. And that's mostly because, prior to my recent upgrade, I haven't really been able to play games like this for the channel. I could play the games themselves on my measly 8 gigs of RAM, but... <sighs> Um, I have just enough O2 to make it through the shift. Um, I was not really able to record them. OBS is a great program, especially considering it's free, and I love it, but my computer, and I guess by OBS kind of by extension, really could not handle recording games like this at all. <laughs> Not with any decent frame rate. Like, I tried to play some Nautica, and that didn't really work for me. So, now that I'm able to play games like this, I really want to start doing more than just Final Fantasy videos. Seven seconds. I mean, I love Final Fantasy XIV. Look at this. Uh, 1.788 million credits. Very good. The reactor was probably the best out of all of our salvage. Of course it was. <clears throat> Alright, now all we have to do is finish up our furniture and get some more money. Let's check out that data. Let's recover it. Let's see. Northeast High School, Port Olympus. Tug crew, you are reading asteroid 4110 Keats to the surface of Mars to be mined. That is awesome looking. That is one hell of a picture. A bit close to that city though, don't you think? Oh well. Let's continue salvage, and we'll continue to talk about the channel. So I want to do more than just Final Fantasy videos. I know that has been my main focus basically since the channel began. I want that to change. Not fully, because I still love Final Fantasy XIV. It's one of my favorite games. It's got one of the best stories of any Final Fantasy game. But I want to do more stuff like this, which is just... These crazy ideas for games that, you know, people think, oh man, that sounds boring, that's nothing, this is just a weird idea. Well, it is a weird idea, but it's great at the same time. When I played Space Engineers, you know, <laughs> the few times it ran properly on my computer because the game's an unoptimized heap, um... I always enjoyed breaking apart derelicts. And this game is 100% that. These ships may not be derelicts, but they are condemned to recycling. And we have completed our work order. The big thing I want to work on is having a more consistent upload schedule. This isn't always easy because of my day job, and I know most YouTubers, when you know, when they start, have day jobs, and they find a way to do it. I want to find a way to do it too. Uh oh, this is not good. <laughs> it's pulling the whole damn ship.
Well, that's okay. You can just do that, I guess. And I'll just work with it. It's going to where it needs to go. This seems to have stopped spinning, so we're, we're good. We're fine. No, no disaster. We're, we're okay here. Uh, is that not... Is that not disconnected? Oh, there are still some links in there. Yeah, you'll be fine. Oh, yes. We completely forgot to unbolt this. So the main thing is, I want to play new games, and that's going to help my upload schedule as well, because with the Final Fantasy playthrough, I'm basically just uploading after I finish an expansion, and that's obviously not going to be good for an upload schedule. I suppose if I played every single day, which admittedly I don't, I could probably do it, but that's not going to happen. There's only so much MMORPG that my brain can take before it starts to uh, sizzle a little bit. <laughs> Any long-time MMO player can attest to that. But this, I love this game. I fell in love with it the moment I started playing it. I was so disappointed that my computer didn't run well enough to, for me to do a proper career mode playthrough, but now it is, and now I'm going to. Even if my frame rate is probably not as high as some of these people with absolute beastly PCs, I'm hoping that my my good old Foxy Games charm will win through. The fuck am I kidding? I want Foxy Games to be a name that people know. I don't want to just be that guy with 42 subscribers on YouTube. To that end, I am going to be diversifying the games that I play. Well, I'm almost certain we'll have enough chairs for that uh, certification rank. Certification goal has been completed. Well, what do you know? Additional goals, remain. Additional goals remain. That's probably the money aspect, which is whatever. We'll make the money. Uh, this crate needs to go to the barge as well, and then the rest of this can probably just go to the, uh, oh, no, not yet. We need the atmosphere regulator and this door panel. And now the rest of it can just go off to the furnace to burn to death. Wait, processor. Is this whole panel for the processor? It is. Well, the processor can have them. So that being said, uh, those of you who actually watch my content, um, all 42 of you, currently, what games would you like to see? N I do request that not a single one of you say Fortnite, because I hate that game and everything it represents. But, if there are other games that are not complete cancer that you would like for me to play, just go ahead and let me know and I'll consider them. I won't make any promises, because it really depends on uh, whether or not my computer can run it, because while I did upgrade my RAM from 8 to 32 gigabytes, um, 32 isn't even the standard anymore. Now 64 is, I believe. Oh shit, come here. Shit. Well, I might as well use a repair kit. Welcome to Vindatron 9000. Oxygen level stabilizing. Thank you for your purchase. Have a nice day. Yeah, the repair kits out here, uh, you have to buy them. You can't just, you can't just use the ones that you found, which is shit. But whatever. And I'm pretty sure the ones that you find out there are stored somewhere, but I'm not sure. I believe that's the way it used to be. Wow, I took everything out of here, didn't I? Well, only one place for it to go then. Into the fire! 
So anyway, I do appreciate... Oh shit, that's a whole nanocarbon panel. Will it come off if I do that? Nope. So, it can go fuck itself as far as I'm concerned, because it doesn't have any more cut points. Oops. Anyway, that's the rest of this ship. Raw material process. Credits Oof. We lost a thousand kilograms of nanocarbon. Oh, 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 that's not good. Oh. But we still got some metal out of it, so it's cool. We completed our work order, we made some money, and now it's time to go. All right, novice rank five. We made oh, hold on, a lot of upgrades are unlocked. Very good, and ship class three certification. We made one point one eight one million credits on that, with the most of our money coming from nanocarbons and seats and computers again. And it's gonna tell us that we destroyed a whole bunch of shit, but you know. It's whatever. Oh, what's this now? Ghost ships. Starting this week, we will be receiving semi-regular shipments of ships found abandoned near the edges of the frontier. You may hear others refer to these as ghost ships, but please note, ghost ships is a colloquialism, and Lynx takes no responsibility for any non-corporeal entities <laughs> encountered aboard these vessels. These ships have been gently used by previous crews before being discarded for reasons we are not legally required to ascertain. <laughs> a reminder that all vessels, either previously Lynx-owned or otherwise, void their ownership rights if uninhabited for three days. Under stellar law, Lynx has first salvage rights to uninhabited vessels, as outlined in page 178, section C, addendum 5.2 of your Lynx handbook. Please note that, while a preliminary sweep of the ship has been done, revealing only min mi uh, minor anomalous readings, oh god, a more in-depth assessment of any issues, terrestrial or otherwise, is the sole responsibility of the assigned shipbreaker. Any questions can be directed to the HR hotline email listed in your handbook. Happy scrapping, Lynx Corporate. What a corporate message, telling us to not mind the ghosts, basically. We also have some unread messages in our app here. Interesting. And also, we, uh, we leveled up. Hey Cutters, Lily from Lynx here, just for a friendly reminder, uh-oh, that programming or propagation of artificial intelligence is strictly forbidden. We at Lynx understand the appeal. Wow, completely automated workforce? Sounds like a dream come true. But sadly, laws are clear and under the Artificial Intelligence Act of New Australia. If you see a friend or colleague talking about AI, building AI, or a machine god, please reach out to a Lynx representative in concern. Remember, our lines are purely confidential and our sources are properly compensated. Ah, nothing like the corporate machine trying to tell you to snitch. Um, can I not, can I not click this? Okay, back. Oh, there we go. Hey Cutter, oh, it's from Weaver. So these ships keep popping up at the edge of the frontier. Vessels without crews, completely empty, manifestos cleared out and blaring weird radio signals. Our best guess is bandits, but of course, once jaws get wagging, you get a bunch of ghost stories. Seeing figures through the fog and all that hogwash, try not to let anything spook you. It's just a bunch of fried circuits. I'll be checking in if anything strange pops up. Just keep your head down and don't be afraid of no ghost. Weaver. Thanks, Weaver. Oh boy, I can't wait to get to one of those. And I'm, I'm saying that legitimately. Alright. Rank 5. We need to get some work orders done, we need to do some reactors, some thrusters, and make some money! We're also gonna upgrade our equipment. We're going to... Eh, we don't need to repair this shit yet. Um, our scanner. We do want to get the object scanner. That sounds good. 
let's see, O2 recharge module that allows for uh, recharging of oxygen while you're inside a pressurized environment. We're not going to worry about the work suit. Mm, let's see, the grappler range, strength. Let's upgrade the strength of the grapple. That sounds good. All right, that's all the upgrading that we can do right now. We've recovered all the data that we could. So that's going to do it for this shift and this episode. So until I see you again, my name is Foxy Games. Maybe we'll find ourselves one of those ghost ships and have a good old spoopy adventure. But until then, take care, everybody. Bye.